What's the best way of treating a bunion on your foot without surgery? Or can it even be done? Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Candy, and I've had bunions since as young as I can remember. I remember being in middle school in wrestling practice and coming home almost in tears because of the pain on the ball of my foot. Now, if you don't know much about wrestling shoes, they're very, very thin, often cut very narrow, and you spend a lot of time on your toes like this. I happen to have my right foot in back, and so the bunion on my right foot is significantly worse than the bunion on my left. It gave me pain for a number of years through college when I stopped wrestling, and eventually that and switching to wider shoes, the pain eventually went away. Now, can you get rid of the bunion deformity without surgery? Well, to understand that, you have to really know what causes a bunion. And essentially, it's a buildup of extra bone where you've got abnormal tissue stress, and so your body lays down extra bone over that area. And once that's happened, it, it is more or less permanent. So to actually get rid of the deformity, it does require surgery. But surgical outcomes aren't that great. Case reports or case series report adverse effects as high as 25 to 50 percent of patients being dissatisfied after a bunion repair. Now a 2018 systematic review that pulled 229 studies actually found that it's about closer to 10 percent of people who are dissatisfied after their bunion surgeries and in 5 percent or 1 out of 20 it actually doesn't even fix the problem. The problem comes back. Now, if it's just a cosmetic problem, there are risks of infection, non-union of the repair, there are risks of persistent pain where you may not have had pain before, and there are risks of needing another surgery. So if you're just having cosmetic problems and you just wanna look nice in sandals, aren't having any major problems with your everyday life, I would highly suggest not having bunion surgery because the risks are much greater than the benefit. Now, if it is giving you trouble in your everyday life and it's restricting you from doing the things you need and want to be able to do, and you've tried all the conservative treatments that you possibly can and still have persistent pain and disability, then you've got about a nine out of 10 chance of having a good outcome. But again, there's a 10% chance that you might have a bad outcome. So what can you do to stop your bunion pain without surgery? Well, here are a couple things that I've found that have worked for me. Number one is you definitely want to switch to wider shoes. One of the biggest causes of bunions is trying to fit a foot that's naturally fan-shaped like this into narrow pointed shoes. Now, most shoes kind of come together and round at a point, but stilettos or high-heeled shoes that really point your toes down into a squished down pointed toe box are the worst culprits. Additionally, when you're wearing high heel shoes like that, you're not only squished together, but you're up on your toes, which further worsens the problem. So getting out of the high heeled pointy shoes and switching to a wider toe box and probably a little bit more to a flat heel are often a good solution. Additionally, you can do some exercises and stretches to help get your toe back in a better alignment. Granted that it may not completely take care of the problem, but you've got a joint right here called the metatarsophalangeal joint. The metatarsal is this bone right here, and phalanges is basically a medical term for fingers or toes. So you've got this ball of the foot joint, and when you have narrow shoes, it forces the toe inward, and the metatarsal starts to come outwards. So to help fix that, you want to grab your foot like this, kind of push the metatarsal inwards, and then grab the big toe with your fingers. I'm not sure if you heard that, but it just kind of popped there a little bit. And that's fairly common when you do this with a bunion, is that you might get a little pop out of that joint. But then you can start out just pulling, kind of a distraction, pulling the two joint surfaces away, like that. And that just gives a little bit more mobility in the joint in general. It increases the joint space. 
And then after you've stretched out the toe like that, you'll start to kind of pull it sideways. And if you've got a really bad bunion, there will be a bone spur over here that will eventually limit your range of motion. You're not going to be able to pull it out all the way. But try to pull it out as far as you can comfortably without causing yourself additional pain. And then just hold it there for a period of time, usually about 30 seconds or so. Then after you've done that, then you want to start to activate the muscles that do that. Now you've got a muscle on the bottom of your foot called the abductor hallucis. The hallucis is your big toe. And so that abductor moves the big toe away from the midline like this. Now the tendon of it runs right around this big toe joint. And if you've got a bunion there, it impedes the line of pull that allows that toe to be pulled out this way. And so it makes it really hard to spread your toes out. It's a hard enough muscle to recruit as is because you don't really think about using it in everyday life. But if you manually separate it a little bit and then try to hold it out, so it's an active cyst. You're trying to activate that muscle and help pull it out with the assistance of your finger. That can help you start to activate it. Now you'll notice here, you may see that my arch starts to dome a little bit as I'm doing that. Now getting to the next point, that tendon runs along here, sort of on the outside bottom surface of your foot. And so if you dome your arch a little bit or scrunch the toes a little bit, it lifts that metatarsal phalangeal joint up, gets it out of the way of the tendon, and if you scrunch the toes, you actually can abduct or bring your big toe out that way a little bit better. So scrunching the toes, and then it's a really odd sensation but kind of thinking about pulling the toe out to the side that way. And you can see how it aligns much better, not perfectly, with the metatarsal there versus relaxed. It veers inwards that way. So scrunch the toe, get that abductor hallucis tendon underneath the joint, and then think about spreading the toes out. Now, that's all great in theory, but what happens when you go to stand up? Well, ideally, you want to be able to maintain that position of scrunching the toes and abducting the big toe as you go to stand up. And you'll see how that gives you an additional little post right here to where you're not going to overpronate versus when your toe is in like this, there's nothing to block that overpronation. So scrunch the toes, abduct, and then you've got a little post here to prevent you from flattening out your arch too much when you're walking. Now, what other things can you do to help improve a bunion without surgery? Well, there are a couple of devices and products that are actually pretty helpful. The first one is toe spreaders. And toe spreaders come in various brands and various forms. These are primal step toe spreaders. I'll put the Amazon link down in the description below. But you just put them on your feet like this, and they go around each toe individually, kind of weave them in and out. It takes a little bit of practice. I had a lot of difficulty doing this the first time, but it gets easier the more you practice with it. And weave them in and out. You have to kind of spread your toes a little bit to space them out, especially if they're really jam packed together. I would be a little careful how long you wear these the first time. I wore them for, I think, a half an hour the first time I had them on, and my toes started to get a little cold and numb. So just pay attention to how you're feeling and take them off if you notice your toes are getting cold or turning blue or getting numb or anything that you think is otherwise strange. I also did have a little bit of a split in the skin between my little toe and my ring toe the first time because they'd been so used to being jammed into tight shoes that the skin had kind of grown together. So if that does happen to you, it's not a major concern, but I would let that heal up and kind of close back up together before you start putting the toe spreaders back on. And to put them on the other side, again, you just kind of weave them back on like this. 
And so you can see how this kind of helps space out the toes and give you a little bit more of that natural alignment. It keeps the big toe from further going inwards. These are good to wear around the house for short periods of time when you're out of shoes and helps you get a little bit of spreading back in the toes to form that more fan shape, natural shape of the foot. So those are toe spreaders. Now, speaking of the natural shape of the foot, that brings me on to the next product, which is ultra running shoes. And ultras have a foot shaped shoe. That's one of their hallmark features is that they're actually more fan shaped. They don't kind of come in to a point so that your foot functions in more of a natural form. Most of them are zero drop as well, meaning that your toe and your heel are at the same angle. So it doesn't put a lot of pressure down on your toes. And these ones are the Ultra Torrens. They're made for people who tend to overly supinate or tend to hit a little more on the outer side of their foot. They have a lot of different models. When I went to get these, I tried on three of their various models. So again, these are the Torrens and are made for people who tend to supinate or tend to turn on the outer side of their foot too much. The provisions are sort of a medium version. They give a little bit more pronation control, so they're a little bit more of a stability shoe. When I tried those on, they didn't fit my foot very well. Doesn't mean they won't fit yours, but where I had the bunions, they were a little bit narrow. The widespread toe box was a little too far forwards, and I was hitting more in the narrower part of the shoe. The Torrens are a little bit wider, and so these ones felt much better for me when I put them on. Again, that may or may not be the case for you. The other model that I tried on was the Paradigm. And that one is more of a stability shoe. It's got more pronation control. So if you are someone who's flat-footed, and I mean truly flat-footed, not someone like me who has a high arch and just tends to flatten it down, but if you are truly flat-footed or a massive overpronator and you need a lot of motion control and you need something to keep you from flattening down, then the Paradigm might be a good fit for you. So again, those were the Paradigm, the Provision, and the Torrens, ranging from the most stability to the least stability. But these ones were actually extra wide Torrens. I had to get a wider version because even the normal ones didn't fit my foot perfectly. But when I put these on my feet, they just kind of slid right in. We're one of the most comfortable shoes that I've ever tried on, and I've had a lot of difficulty finding shoes that fit my feet appropriately. So if you are looking for shoes that will help your bunions, I would suggest trying out Ultras. Um, this is not a sponsored video. I'm just telling you what's worked for me. And I'll put a link to Amazon products for both the Torrens as well as the toe spreaders that you can check out. Now, between mobilizing your toe joints, getting your abductor halysis muscle to kick on a little bit better so that you can naturally spread your toes, keeping your arch domed, when you walk so that you don't flatten out and overpronate, switching to wider shoes, for example, the ultras, and using toe spreaders. Between those tips, hopefully you can help avoid surgery because again, the success rates are decent, but there's still a 10% chance that you could have something go wrong. And especially if you're just looking to correct a cosmetic feature where there's no symptoms involved, it's probably not your best bet to go for surgery. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a like and make sure to subscribe to our channel so you get notified of our future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.